smart part of this uh, of this lab. So here, what we are going to do is to show you explicitly how to take the data and then how to do the calculations. Okay. We have the cell, and we'll move this screw up and down, and inside this surface that I showed you earlier, that will move up and down in one particular direction, and correspondingly we'll see a change in the deflection here and when we see the change in the deflection we focus on where is the maximum and for what position of the screw we get the maximum so first we look here and see where is the maximum okay so now i'm rotating the screw attached with the cell and you will see there is a deflection corresponding to my you know rotation and uh, this deflection will go from a maximum to a minimum and then come back again and again as i will continue to move the screw up and up or down in one particular direction so i'm moving it in downward direction now so you see it came from nearly a t and then going down and then it goes to minimum value which is close to 40 and then comes back again right so that's how if i keep on moving the screw in one particular direction this will go on from a maximum to a minimum then maximum to a minimum so these maximum and minimum why because the, as i am moving this surface here by rotating the screw i am moving the top surface of the cell and so the wave that is coming from the bottom surface is getting reflected so the standing wave which is being produced here in one case the position of the tip is at a node position in that case we see a maximum and then we keep on moving in let's say downward direction then it goes away from the node position and then goes to a next Anti node, then we see a minimum position, then we keep on further lowering the tip, and then again the deflection rises. And once it reaches to a particular position where it forms a node, then we see a maximum, and that's how we record the position of the nodes, means maximum of the deflection, and from the difference between two consecutive uh, measurements, we can calculate the wavelength. Okay, so for example, uh, in here, let's say that's the position. So I'm rotating one particular direction. Where was my maximum? Maximum was around 80. So right here, right? So if you look at the screw gauge, so let's say this is the position of the screw gauge for the corresponding maximum then what would be the reading here the reading would be okay. so here is the linear scale edge of the circular scale and then from the circular scale we will take around how much is it this is like 14 so 10 11 12 13 14 corresponds to this vertical line of the linear scale so circular scale reading would be 14 and uh, linear scale reading would be something very close to 10 i think so 10 main scale reading 14 linear uh, circular scale reading okay so in this way we'll keep rotating it until we get another maximum we'll take the record from here and this way we can we we take the readings for different positions of the node okay now here we have a set of uh, sample data so x1 corresponds to a position of the screw gears for which the main scale reading was something like 22.50 and the circular scale reading was 24 and how do you get the circular scale reading 0.24 because in uh, because this 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 instrument screw gears has a least count is equal to 0 0.24 0 0.01 mm right so for each of the circular scale reading for example in our last example it was 14 so you will multiply by 0 
So in this case, for this sample uh, reading, it was the circular scale reading was 24. So I multiplied with the least count. So we got 0.24. And then we add these two values and you get the total value. Then for the next node means maximum, the, the main scale reading changed a bit and also the circular reading changed. So we get now the circular scale reading is 36 multiplied by 0 0.01 you get 0.36 and so the total reading is 22.36 and this way these are the different node positions and correspondingly these are the node positions in mm right so if i take the difference between two consecutive positions then what would i get I would get that to be is equal to, so this one is equal to lambda by 2, this one is equal to lambda by 2, this one is equal to lambda by 2 and so forth. So these are all lambda by 2, right. So why is it lambda by 2? Why is it lambda by 2? In the standing wave example, you see for a complete wave so from here to here it's lambda that's one complete wave but if i take how many nodes are here one node is here another node is here another node is here so between two consecutive node distance is lambda by two so this is lambda by two and so forth so that's why, because in here, the consecutive positions were the node positions. So that's why the difference between two consecutive uh, uh, data is, is equal to lambda by 2. So once we have the lambda by 2, then we can use this formula, V is equal to F lambda, where F is already given, which is 2 megahertz. So here are some simple calculations. So earlier, we have shown you the positions of the x1, x2, x3, x4. So we take the difference between these two and these differences turns out to be 0.38 millimeter, 39, 38, 39, 37 and so forth. And so these are all lambda by 2. So then we take the average of all of them and that's the average 0.3811 millimeter. So that's equal to lambda by 2. So then you can calculate the lambda is equal to 2 divided, 2 multiplied by this number. So that's your lambda, lambda of the ultrasound wave that we used, okay. So here, uh, one more thing, here there is this uh, calculation for the least count of the circular scale and the least count, uh, the definition is minimum distance on the main scale, that vertical scale that you have seen and divided by the total number of divisions that there in the circular scale. So total number of division were 50 and the minimum that you can measure in the main scale is 0.5 millimeter and that's why your least count turns out to be 0 0.01 millimeter, right. So this is important for converting the circular scale reading into a real uh, measurement. And then uh, velocity you have got the velocity to be uh, by multiplying it. Uh, so this is a lambda. So earlier the formula was V is equal to F lambda or new lambda. F is the frequency 2 megahertz. Lambda is this millimeter. And when you multiply this, you get this result. So that's the velocity of or the speed of the ultrasound in the liquid that is there in the uh, interferometer cell. And that uh, concludes our calculations and that would be the final result that you would report in your report. Thank you.